Welcome to the Every Nation Dorado Congregation. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Here's a look at this week's announcements. To ensure your safety and the safety of others, we ask that you wear your mask at all our services and events at all times. Join us every Monday as we fast and pray corporately. We meet for face-to-face -face prayer between 5.30 and 7 p.m. We will be starting our marriage preparation classes from the 24th of February. If you are engaged and have already set your date for your wedding day, we encourage you to sign up. Couples will meet weekly on Thursdays for six weeks. The fee for the course is 450 Namibian dollars per couple, which covers a manual and refreshments. We're also seeking couples who can be mentors to these couples during these six weeks. Please sign up at the information desk today or contact Elisette at 081-308-1895. From the 4th to the 5th of March, we will be hosting our Victory Weekend. Victory Weekend is a time to strengthen our spiritual foundations in God and get equipped to overcome spiritual bondages and hindrances in our walk with God. Some of the topics we will cover are identity, victory over sexual sin, victory over relational dysfunctions, addictions, generational sin patterns, and spiritual error. Registrations will close on the 27th of February. The fee will be 200 Namibian dollars per person and includes books and meals. You can sign up at our info desk or contact our office on 081-127-0611. We all have a call from God to help others follow Jesus. Join us at our next Making Disciples training coming up on Friday the 4th of March from 6 p.m. and Saturday the 5th of March from 8.30 a.m. The cost is 50 Namibian dollars per person. Sign up today on our comms groups or at the info table. Join us at our Discover Spiritual Family on the 5th of March at 9 a.m. Come and learn more about who we are as a church and consider membership. Please register on our comms group or sign up at the info table. We invite all men to join our next men's gathering themed Standing Together on Saturday the 26th of February from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It will be a time of learning how to build relationally and planning to impact your life and those around you. Sign up at the information desk today. Our Night of Encounters prayer night will be taking place on Friday the 11th of March at our Dorado Church from 6 p.m. till midnight. Let's look to the Lord and His strength and seek His face always. Visit our website for any additional information at ianvintuk.org. Let's commit to read, understand, believe, and obey the Word of God. Enjoy the service. Awesome. So, uh, Vernon and Elaine are leaders in our church. They are deacons. They have been tested and they are faithful. They are married and they have wonderful children. They are here, wonderful children. And they love Jesus so much. And so just stretch your hands as we bless them so that they can minister to us this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one that inspires grace, Lord, in this family and in this marriage and in this couple, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that our hearts are open for what you want to do this morning. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will transform many lives through this series in Jesus' name. And everybody shout, Amen. 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 I think let me just use this one. I don't know how I'm going to do this in, we have 40 minutes. Really? Pastor said I must have a 15 minute to a 20 minute presentation and then a panel discussion. I don't know. Lord have mercy. But while they are setting up, uh, 
uh, while they are setting up, uh, marriages are indeed under attack. And there are so many, and many people have given up hope in ever finding a successful uh, mate or a mate that, can, that they can really build a life together with. She, she represents a very group, a special group of people, uh, the singles in this house. My wife and I, the last time, the last time I was single was like in 1997 back. I have no clue the pressures that you guys are going through. We did not have Twitter, we did not have Instagram, social media and all those things. But that, that is what you guys are challenged with. Uh, so marriages are in, indeed under attack. And the, the theme scriptures for authentic marriage series is Ephesians 5, actually from verse 25. You can go to the, to the next slide. Maybe just to talk about what we will cover over the next two weeks. Uh, Ten keys to healthy marriages. Now these keys are not exhaustive. It is just what is pertinent now. Maybe next time when we have a, a similar series, those keys may just differ a bit. The next one. So this week, we're going to cover accepting God's analogy of Christ and his bride, understanding of covenant versus contract, love and respect, communicate your expectations, please. Prepare for marriage, not just wedding, and what you need to do there is emotionally, spiritually, financially, and sexually, you need to prepare yourself. Next week, we're going to keep the best, best for last. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. My wife is going to handle that, and all the pressure is off me, and I will sit there and enjoy and chill while she's handling all the pressure. The power of agreement, the power of forgiveness, learn to fight the enemy, not your spouse. Take care of your spouse. And the number nine. Do you all see that? It's only for the married guys. Ne? Sex is from God and for marriage and humility is the road to favor. So those are the ten keys that we will cover over the next two weeks. Uh, next slide, please. The first one. And this is the theme scripture for our, for our topics uh, this, this, this week in this session. Husbands, love your wives. It's a direct verb, ne? It's not indirect, passive. It's love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water by the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or anything, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, in the same way. What does that mean? Now, I was not good in languages, so I hated what is that creative work when you do the prescribed books and you need to interpret what this thing said, what did this... I hated it. But for some reason, when it comes to the word, I just see those things. It's like the, <laughs> those things are flagged. In the same way means I need to refer back to husbands, love your wife, and what all, everything that is listed there, what Christ did for his church... In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. This is no different from the scripture where Jesus said, Love your neighbor 
as yourself. Now you have a very specific neighbor that you share one bed with. Ne? It's true, ne? There's no one else. It's that neighbor, that specific neighbor that you need to share the bed with and the room with and they see you like you were born. You need to prepare emotionally yourself for that. So, if you, husband, if you are like me, I told the earlier service, I have four large, very huge mirrors in my walk-in closet. 1.3 to 1.5 wide, 2.3 meters long. Four on each door. So when I walk out of the shower, lo and behold, I see the beauty what God created in the mirrors. And my wife said, please finish, hurry up. We need to, we're going to be late because I am enjoying this so much. Uh, I was not there in the past. Where I'm coming from, there is another story. So I will not go down that rabbit hole now. But where I'm coming from and where the Lord has brought me now. That scripture, you should not think more highly than your, of yourself than you ought to change my life. So that's why I've become a little bit conceited in the Lord, uh, where I think very highly of myself, and God has made me confident. Because our confidence as children of God, we get from the Father, who He speaks over us who we are and what we are in Him. That gives us confidence. So, now He says, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So the question is, if you man, if you don't love yourself, then you can't love your wife. Is it true? When you look at in society, with husbands and the domestic violent, violent issues that you find out there, you will generally drill down to the root cause where this guy is fighting with himself. But it is the girlfriend that is getting the punches. Okay? So if you as a husband struggle to love your wife, then maybe we need to dig into this area. So that's why you need to come to next week's event. 26 of Feb, where we can talk man to man, okay? It's important that we deal with the issues. I think, I don't want to touch on the punchline. We've heard about truckloads of baggage that people are bringing into marriage. So husbands and men, if you don't feel confident and well about yourself, you are not ready to get married. You are not. Next, next slide. This particular scripture, the Lord said I must bring in because there are so many, so, so, so many things that are happening and that the enemy is doing and making us to believe uh, and he is, he is trapping us and he's uh, chaining us and he is enslaving us but Paul in the scripture is, is reminded the Corinthians that so that we may, may not be outwitted by Satan for we are not ignorant of his designs and when you look at the, the Greek word it's talk about his evil plans we are not ignorant of his evil plans so when the information that we in this ministry share with the married couples and even the premarital couples when we prepare them for marriage, that is so that you will not be outwitted by the enemy. Because when you have information, indeed the Lord said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Okay? So when we impart this knowledge and when they speak from their life and from their experiences, you don't have to make the same mistakes. Wisdom is the following. Not to learn from your own mistakes, but to learn from others. 
okay and at least when we build marriages in this congregation we want i want you to start from my shoulders and up don't start where my feet are okay i want you to start from my shoulders so that the next generation can start each time at a much higher elevation and from a much higher elevation it is ludicrous for us if we each start again with foundational stuff okay so we we need to make sure that we eradicate uh, ignorance out of this church and among uh, from among the couples as well so that we may not be outwitted by satan for we are not ignorant of his devices next slide please how am i doing on time yeah the second point here is maybe before i go into that when the lord shared with me um the analogy of christ and his bride that was about in the year 2010 to 2012 my wife and i had something on a difference we never fought like it's fire and that it's there was always a difference and the woman will give you that look you know and then you know you're in trouble i went to bed my side of the bed like there she was on that side of the bed and i think she must have been praying because the holy spirit start dealing with me and he was asking me do you unconditionally love your wife now when there's a difference you don't feel like you're loving her at that stage so i said yes i think i do do you do you um love her unconditionally i said yes even if she does not reciprocate your love will you still love her unconditionally i said i think i will be able to do that i will do it and i said lord why are you asking me me these questions because i said because when you look at him now as jesus how he pours his love out on us as his church yet we always do not respond back in love we respond back in disobedience can you see love your wife the same way as christ loves his church so christ unconditionally loves us he doesn't look at our faults because he came to remove the, uh, our faults and i i feel so sorry for the ladies that are bombarded with these cosmopolitan magazines and all these different beauty magazines because it they make you feel so incomplete so not beautiful and then you need to buy all these different kinds of products so that you can impress your friends and i don't know who else so that you can believe that you believe that you look beautiful husbands it's our role as a man that we need to wash our wives with our words and our words should build her up make her feel good about herself make her feel that she is loved make her feel that she i mean she's my wife so she must also have the attitude like she's vernon's wife you know funny story she wants to eat her hair at some salon and then uh frank's wife frank frederick's wife was also doing it and she was going on there and my wife said and she said do you know whose wife i am and she told that one now do you know whose wife i am <laughs> because she wanted to pull a title so i said okay i i'm also somebody's wife so and that is that is that is the important thing so but we as men we need to build and we need to edify our wives up that is what christ is doing is i mean he's giving us prophets that can edify the church with words of knowledge and wisdom and all these things building up the church so we need to speak that kind of life into our, our into our wives okay so when when it comes to the second point now understanding covenant and contract two parties are involved because we are talking about marriage here right 
It's not polygamy. We are only talking about a husband and a wife, and we are committing to a binding agreement. Now, when we talk about a binding agreement, and in the, in the context of agreement normally is that I want to force the other one to do what they're supposed to do. But in the context of covenant, what you are bringing to the table is you bring what your commitment is to it. And up front, you state what it is. And you say, this is what I commit to, whether you perform or not. That is the difference between covenant and, and contract. So it involves promises and oaths that are made. When we look at Christ, he took, he took on uh, he, him our sin and we and he, placed on, and he placed on us his righteousness. So there's an exchange happening. Okay? And then there's a physical sign or a symbol with marriage. You have the ring. I mean, we have the cross also like what, what God did, um, that this is how he cut his covenant with. And obviously blood must flow. I think that is on the next slide. So witnesses will be there. So whenever you have your ceremony, you invite people to the, to the wedding so that they can be witnesses to this ceremony. Next slide, please. So there's a name change. You have become Mrs. Breedenkamp. Ne? You've, you've given up your old, your old name. So that is normally what happens. So the woman becomes and takes on the man's name. Uh, and it's usually sealed with the flow of blood. So when you're a virgin, uh, and then you and, your wife, uh, you and your husband come together that evening, blood will flow. Okay? And that is, that is how you seal the covenant that you are cutting with your husband uh, when you are consummating your marriage. Number eight, a ceremony or a ritual is normally performed and to enforce it. Um, and then maybe just to, 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 to highlight under number seven, under the Jewish culture, it is the pride and the honor of the father um, when that uh, sheet is removed. While the wedding ceremony is, you as a couple have to go into a room and Basically, the woman has to prove that she's a virgin. And then when they do the act and the blood and the, and the hymen is broken, then the blood flows. The, you wipe the blood off with that cloth and then somebody is sent out with that cloth to go prove to the, the party. <laughs> My daughter was a virgin. It's your father's pride and joy what you have, what God has given you. So don't just give it to anyone away. If he doesn't put the ring in your feet, I'm talking about not the engagement ring, the wedding ring. If he doesn't put that in your finger, sorry. No nookie, no cookie. <laughs> Number nine, and it has serious uh, and negative consequences when breaking and benefits when you keep it. So normally when you cut the covenant with somebody and you don't keep it, you are dead, basically. That was, that was the consequences. So a covenant is a serious thing. It's not something that you would do lightly. The benefits, of, obviously, because normally a covenant is cut with unequally yoked, not yoked partners, but unequal in the sense that the one is more power than the other. So generally in the context of marriage, the man was the one that will provide for his family. The wife was the one that will be at, at work. Uh, at home. Uh, today, times, things have changed, so both parties are working, but that is what, what happened in the past. Next slide, please. Uh, number three, love and respect. Respect, obviously, is so, 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 so important for a man. Uh, we've, I think, touched quite a number uh, of times on, uh, on, on the importance of respect. Uh, love to a woman is more important, uh, and there's a scriptural reference for that. I want to get to my panel, so we are doing good on time. Number four, communicate. Now, if you thought that sex will be the most important activity in marriage, you made a very big mistake. You have to talk. And for us as men, hmm, that is a skill that we have to learn how to communicate. And, and especially when it comes to expectations. Expectations are formed in, by the background that you're coming from. So how you were raised, your culture, things like that. And most of the times, you just assume when you are married, it will be the same way. Okay? Now, you have an expectation that is not communicated. Whew, that is the recipe for disaster. That is when the fight starts. 
So it's important that as a couple that you communicate your expectations. Because expectations, expectations change through time. Né? When you're just the two of you, your expectations will be limited to a few things. You add the kids, you add time to that, you add schooling to that, you add different neighborhood because the one where you're staying is not safe anymore or hasn't become safe anymore. Expectations will change as you grow. You too grow. The important thing is, and this is the principle, is you need to talk about it. What you find in counseling is that the enemy will use and exploit any miscommunication or non-communication. That is where he uh, festers. That is where he breeds. So we should give him no room in our, in our marriage marriages. We should let him and give him no place. But when you open up the communication channels, and, and ladies, if you see that your husband is struggling talking, please don't interrupt him. Let him speak and, 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 and say what he needs to say. Even if it's difficult, and try to read through the lines what the boy is trying to say, because we are not that good with words. <laughs> we have a very limited vocabulary, so uh, we need help. Next slide, please. The last one. And I'm so glad for the time that oof, I've done so well this time, this morning. You should have seen this morning, eh? Prepare for marriage. And I think emotionally, and I said earlier, you need to emotionally prepare. You need to be emotionally prepared because you're, not, you're single now. Your role is going to change. You're going to be called somebody's wife. You're going to be called somebody's husband. You're going to be called somebody's dad. You understand? Titles and things are changing and if you are not emotionally prepared for that, and especially, whoo, especially when you get, go to the mailbox, okay, back in the day, now you see how old I am, and you get the statements from all these accounts that you have, and it's just those windows, you know, you can see. It's not the closed ones. Those ones that you know it's an account so that is sent. Those ones. When you see those ones, you have to pre be prepared for it because your father, he used to take care of the accounts, is not there anymore. So you as a man have to take on that responsibility, even if it's your wife's. Ultimate responsibility is you, husband, to settle the account. Because if your financial affairs are not in order, it, you are to blame, not the wife. You need to prepare spiritually also. So if your view of marriage is not the same as God's view, you need to align it back to God. You need to align it back to the word. Okay, financially, I think I will not dwell on that one, but you need to prepare, not that you just have a wedding, but that you are well off in marriage itself. Okay? And lastly, you need to prepare sexually also. Yep. If you haven't had sex before, you need to prepare your body for that. Because they are now foreign objects. I'll just, I'll just stop there. And you need to prepare to receive all these foreign objects into your bodies. Uh, so, and you need to prepare for that. And if you have a view that sex is not pure and sex is not holy, and the reason for that may be that you were molested or raped. We need to deal with that. Because you cannot step into marriage with that baggage. It's going to cause a lot of problems. That's why we have Victory Weekend. And you've seen the announcement. Try four chapters of one-to-one, -one. you can still do it and you can go to Victory week Weekend so that we can deal with those issues. I've gone through my presentation. I have my expert panel here that will cover and speak on, on the five topics, how um, they have applied God's truth in, in, in their marriages and it has worked for them. They may, I, I know they've done counseling also for other couples. 
and speak from those experiences also. Because what we, our objective is, is that you are informed and that you know. So that we are not outwitted by the evil plans of the enemy. Amen. Now you will perhaps wonder why the single lady is there. She is not married. If there are any interested men, you'll have to come through me to her. <laughs> so uh, why she is there, she will speak on behalf of the single ones in the house. The last time I was single was 1993. Back. So I have no clue what it means today. to be single today. In the, in, the, in the age of Twitter and Instagram and all these things and whatever is available uh, on tally. I will start with my wife, that she can start. Hello, is it on? Not? Can you hear me? Uh, to the singles, I want to say we're not here to condemn you. If you've overstepped the boundaries, God is a restorer. He can restore, and that is why it's important that you go to Victory Weekend, that you get deliverance from whatever is going to hinder your marriage. It's going to make it difficult to be the wife that God has created you to be. And then to the married couples, I want to say that no marriage is too far off and um, that, that God can't restore. I know that as a couple, we're doing a lot of counseling and I've seen marriages that were already, they were already busy engaging with lawyers, that they've decided, no, this is not working for me. And I've seen how God has restored that. So if there are couples here today who are really struggling, I want you to reach out. You don't have to suffer in silence. We're not perfect. We all make mistakes. So, and if you know about couples who are struggling, please, Please let them get the help. There is a lot of stuff that we can help them, that we have the tools. If you look at the premarital that we, we are going through, there are couples, they, they just re, uh, realize that this is not for me or it's not for us yet. Let's rather wait and go through, work through our stuff, work through our package, then we come back. And I would rather see couples doing that instead of going into a marriage and then they want to go see a lawyer. Nowadays, it's very difficult. And we as a church, we don't, we don't believe in divorce. We believe that God is a restorer and God can restore. And if you have a, a struggle with, for instance, love and respect, or it's difficult for you to submit, come to us. We can help you, woman. You don't have to suffer in silence. Come and let us work through whatever issues are there. They are usually a root cause. And if we have identified that root cause, then we can help you. And you can be a better wife and you can enjoy marriage. And it can be an authentic marriage. You know, in the morning when you wake up, you can actually say, God, thank you that I'm blessed to wake up, you know, with this person next to me. And when you go sleep tonight, what we do in the morning, we pray before we, uh, I'm at home, but before he goes to work. Then we pray for each other, we bless each other, and we look into each other's eyes, even if the breath is not, you know, <laughs> that well. But you just know that if you pray for that person, and if you have blessed that person, that you can't, you know, leave any open door for Satan. And if you bless your family, if you bless your kids, especially if they write exams, you know, so there are so many tools that we can use, and I want to invite even the single ladies. If you know there are areas that you're struggling, come, come to us. We are married for almost 24 years, and I love to uh, give back, you know, to put back into your life. So if, if you know there are any areas, know that we are there. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just, just to know to whom I'm talking to. How many are married? Just raise your hand. Okay, now, unlike the, the first service, the, the single ones are more. are more. So let me talk to the singles. <laughs> you know, there is a difference between men and women, as you know. 
you know? It's a big difference. Uh, I have a boy and a girl. That is a, a big advantage. I keep on telling to my son, you are more advantaged than me because you have a sister. Me, I have a brother. So, as uh, Vernon was saying, we men, we talk differently. And uh, my encouragement to the men is start learning how to talk to the ladies. Why? Because we men, we are problem solvers. Any, any situation we want to troubleshoot, you know, like in the computer world, they say, women are not interested in that. that you need to have that between here and here, and hopefully that it will stop inside. Because that will create a lot of problems. Because the lady wants to talk to you, her heart out, she wants to pour out her heart, and you just want to fix her. <laughs> yeah? And uh, we cannot even fix ourselves as men. <laughs> we want to fix the other person. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to you, you know, sometimes yeah, uh, Lindsay will st talk very nice things, so I don't want to touch on her issues. But please, men, start learning how to talk because marriage is not just sex. And that's what we think. I don't want to take her part. But please, that you need to have it deep into your head. I'll, most of the time is talking. Is talking. And you need to learn how to talk yeah. from very early. And not troubleshoot, not fix your wife or your marriage, is to learn how to communicate and learn expectations. Now, a second thing I want to talk, especially to both actually, is the issue of sex. Uh, we, we see TV, we see a lot of these things, and we want to emulate what is happening on TV. That is, and I keep on telling also my children, that is fantasy, that is a movie, it's not real. Some of that things could be real, but you see, God has created sex for marriage because he wants us to have good memories. Sometimes we end up in, in the wrong time, in the wrong moment, and we end up with a child. Is that a good memory? You are not married. The, the, the man probably will leave you. That is most of what is happening in Namibia. They will not take the responsibility, so you will end up with a bad memory. Even the, the man, you will end up with a bad memory because at the end of the day, you might need to support the person. So let me just conclude with that. Is, there is, it, it is widely known in Namibia that is the proof of fertility. Eh? Now I need to know that you can bear a child. That is not biblical. So please, as men, let's start first talking. And second, sex is created for good memories. Um, I want to... It's on. Quickly, for the sake of time, I will touch on the accepting God's analogy of Christ and his bride. Uh, for me, in my culture, men and the kitchen are almost a taboo. I'm saying almost because my grandmother told me that if you don't learn how to cook porridge for yourself, you will starve. But culture teaches us that kitchen is not for men. And also on the other part is why should fathers, I'm saying fathers and husbands, bath their children? It's, it's almost a taboo. I think it was never seen in our cultures that men can also give a bath to a child. So what I did myself intentionally was to go against that norm. And that was even before I learned about Gary Chapman's five love languages. And before I learned that, my wife's one um, language is acts of service. So, but it was for me that I need to break cultural norms when it comes to husbands and men. So when my father was visiting, I intentionally told my wife, I'm going to cook. When my auntie or my sister was visiting, I'm going to cook, you know? Especially now in the evenings, if they were around in the evenings, I'll tell them I'm bathing my son. 
I had that opportunity because that was very early on in our marriage. One year we had a child, and, and that quickly set a new culture in my, in my home, that it doesn't matter who's visiting. My father-in-law nowadays, when he comes, he looks at me, he's like, when am I, am I eating your food? <laughs> because it's no longer frowned upon. And I had to break that very early on in my marriage. Um, and then the other part uh, that I want to touch on is preparing for marriage, not just the wedding. Um, what I want to emphasize there is marriage is the now and the long haul. It happens when you agree that you are married, the parents have agreed, or the law has agreed, or the pastors has agreed. Those three levels, either one constitutes marriage. Some people never get an opportunity to go to the courts, never get an opportunity to come in church. I didn't get married in church. I got married under a tree when my father-in-law said, you can have her as your wife. And I was quick to say, yeah. And we left that evening, you know. I left that evening with my wife, and we came back to Vendok. And now the wedding was a different story because it's an event. So I, I promised her, year one, we're going to have a wedding. Now we have marriage. So we had a marriage, but year one didn't happen. We didn't have our wedding as I promised. So I didn't break the promise because now we're working through marriage together and we're financially planning the wedding together. So we had our wedding when we turned 10 years in marriage. So it is important to differentiate the two. Marriage and wedding are two different things. Plan for marriage, and that includes financially plan for marriage because marriage starts today and it's a long haul. And wedding, we're going to party and leave you with your marriage, with your financial issues. And we will be gone and say, hey, the meat was bent a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Am I on? Yeah. Okay. My name is Emily, married to my handsome husband, Nelson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my experience during my, year, my early years of marriage was uh, submission. It was a very big uh, hindrance to my, my life. But luckily, in uh, every nation, we, have, we had uh, couples that are older than us that went through the whole uh, courses on submission and other topics in marriages. And uh, through those workshops, and courses, I was able to overcome the, the evilness of, <laughs> of not submitting to my, to my husband. And it also, the background is from where, because I was, um, I was born in exile, and there was no, like, a family unit where you could see husband and wife really living in a house and uh, proper guidance. So we were just living by our life, children, go to school, sleep, eat, wake up. And uh, from exile, I came when I was like 14, 13 years old. I came to live with my parents in Venduk. And I lived with them for 12 years. And then I met Nelson. I, was, I also started working two years when I left the house. Um, so I, 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 I couldn't really see that. Uh, submission or that uh, living husband and wife together in my, in my growing up times. So that's what uh, I think that was a background or that was a hindrance probably that I couldn't see. Yeah. And one another thing is um, finance. When I started working, I was living with my parents. I had everything. I, was, uh, I had my own flat at the back. I was not paying rent, I was not buying food, everything was just for me. So I decided to have all our clothing accounts in, in Vanduk. <laughs> I had Edgar's, Foshini, True Worlds, all you can name. So now when I got married, Nelson started seeing all the mails coming. Ah, what mails are these? So he checked, ah, Edgar's, wow, what did you buy? So then he sat me down, okay, let's see what is happening. We opened, I owe a lot of money to these clothing um, shops. So then we decided, okay, let's see. You have to go and you have to pay all the accounts of this shop and we are no more going to have um, clothing accounts. 
So I, we started to put up a, a roster or a, what a schedule. Okay, for the whole six months, you must just pay one by one. You are not buying clothes, no shoes, nothing at all. Because like every month I had to buy shoes. I cannot live with shoes for like uh, six months or four months. I have to always have uh, new shoes, do my hair, you know, nails. <laughs> So yeah, after that, I couldn't buy anything. I was very stressed, <laughs> crying all the time. And then I went to my parents' uh, house. I, I, I spoke to my mom. I said, no, mom, I can't do this anymore. I cannot even buy anything for myself. I can't buy clothes. I have to live with all these things. Uh, I have to change. No, you have to like, in six months, you must not uh, double clothes or what do they call it? <laughs> all the time, you, have, must have a new, you must have a new wardrobe of clothes. So Nelson came, we said, okay, every month you must pay off, you must pay off one account. I said, okay, fine. But I couldn't really, I just wanted out. He said, but I feel so disrespected and... Um, not loved. Not loved. So what kind of love is this where I cannot do what I want to do to make me feel good? I said, no, you don't understand. Now you are no more single, we are two. All the finances, it's, uh, we have to do it together. I said, okay, fine. One month came, I have to pay off, where is the cut? Then you have to cut, cut. I... <laughs> cut off the cut. And this also, it just didn't happen um, once off. Gradually, I, 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 what? I accepted the situation. And then I also decided, yeah, it's true. We cannot just be having accounts. When money comes in, goes to account, you are not even saving. I didn't have any saving. You know, <laughs> I didn't have any savings at all. So he came to wake, to wake me up, to give me a slap in the face. That, okay, what we are going to have only, it must just be on debts. It must just be a car or a house. And I said, a car and a house. But what about all other costs that we have to incur in the house? No, just save. You can save. You can save for your clothes. Two months, he said, two months saving. Ah, no, I can't. So eventually, we came to that point that I didn't have any debts, but I was feeling very good for myself, that I don't need to pay anyone when my salary comes, because I was only living on the salary. I don't need to pay anyone or count. I have to pay this one, 2,000. Then I'm living with this. I have to buy now. I have to buy from there my lunch, my taxi money. Ah, at the end of the month, I couldn't be left with anything. So financially, it was really a wake-up call for me, and he helped me. And now financially, we are, we are okay. Only a car and then a house. Thank you. Awesome. Can everyone hear me? Great. Um, so when Uncle Vernon asked me to, to come and speak, I was like, really? <laughs> what do I have to say? You, know, you should be teaching me how to prepare for marriage. Um, but I just sensed a few things to share. Um, number one for me is develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Really, really. Um, the, the, the Westminster Catechism says the chief end of man is to know God and to enjoy him forever, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So that to me is the, the most important thing. He will guide you through every season of life. He will guide you through everything. Um, knowing him is really why we're here and glorifying God is why we're here. So that's the first thing. Um, then the second thing for me is know yourself. <laughs> Who are you really? <laughs> what are you called to do? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Work on those weaknesses. Um, once you know what you're called to do, what your giftings are, step out in faith and start doing those things. It's very, very important. I think some single folks are looking for a partner to tell them who they are and to tell them what they're here for and what they should do. And that's a very dangerous place to be in. Because if someone is telling you what, who you should be, then they are now becoming your Lord instead of Jesus being your Lord. So that's very important. Um, then the next thing was deal with your baggage. Deal with your baggage. 
So wedding photos look very pretty, right? Two people coming together, the guy's in his best suit, the best wedding dress. But I think sometimes if we were to see with the eyes of the spirit, the one person is coming in with a little carry-on luggage, the other one's coming in in like an 18-wheeler on some pam pam, you know, like two red flags on the front, two red flags at the back, abnormal load, you know, like that, that, that's not how you want to start a marriage. And it's supposed to be such a wonderful journey, the way God has designed it. You should both come in with like a little carry-on, get on a plane and soar. The Bible says those who wait on the Lord um, shall rise up with wings on eagles. You know, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint, you know. And, and it also says lay aside every weight, you know, and the sin that so easily entangles. We are running our race. Get rid of those things. Um, a lot of marriages are weighed down by issues that should have been dealt with while you were single, yeah? I was at a, a, a single seminar just yesterday that was talking about misconceptions about marriage, and one of them, marriage is not a cure for lust. It's really not. If you have an issue, deal with it. We have Victory Weekend. Go and confess your sins. Speak to your Connect Group leaders. Deal with that. Go through the process of transformation um, because marriage is not a cure for that, and your lust will destroy your marriage so quickly. So some marriages really never get off the ground because there's just so much baggage. Deal with your baggage. Deal with your baggage. Um, then the next thing is develop yourself. Yeah? Develop yourself. When this mate finds you, what are they going to find you doing? <laughs> Sitting around waiting to get married? You know, develop yourself. That, that's not a profession. Develop yourself. You know, grow. Growing people are attractive people. Have fun. Build great relationships. You will need those friendships when you are married. You will need that community. Be a part of community. Do what God is calling you to do. Um, as you learn about marriage, learn about marriage from the right sources. In a Life for Me was a, a really big one. Um, they have a whole section on marriage and family. And realign the way you see marriage, the way you see relationships to what God says. That's also very important. Understand, um, Uncle, um, uh, Elder Nelson spoke about differences between men and women. Understand that as well. Communication, all of those things are very important. We can start to learn about these things before you get married. Very, very important. Yeah. And um, the last thing, just um, a, a friend of mine, when she was going through their pre premarital course, shared with me. She said that um, they say that marriage, to many people, they think it's a, a beautiful gift box. Yeah. Wrapped in shiny wrapping paper, big bow on top, and they expect that this gift box is going to have all of their dreams and all of their desires and all of the hopes that they have for this wonderful life that they want to live. Then they get married and find that that box is empty. There's nothing in it except what you bring to the table. So my exhortation is as single people, be more focused on what you are bringing to the table than what you want to get out of the marriage. And I think we'll be a lot more prepared for what is to come. Yeah, maybe one last thing um, on love and respect. It's just a short story of my experience. Uh, I had a friend of mine, got married before me. I shared a, a, a flat with him. He left me in my singlehood uh, to go and be with his wife. Uh, but then along in the marriage, he started drinking, smoking, um, things were just not all right. And often the wife would come to me, hey, your friend. Then the one time she came in the night, my husband is not back. And we went ar around town looking for him and the clubs. Uh, couldn't find him, came back midnight. Um, she couldn't sleep, so she went. I think she called somebody. Maybe I didn't look in the right places. I don't know all the clubs because <laughs> I was driving her. Around 3 o'clock, she called me. She said, I found him. I said, I'll come in the morning. Came in the morning. It was a big thing in the house. And I asked the, the brother, it's like, what's wrong? He says, she disrespected me. You know, in his drunken state, he could recognize respect. He's like, what did she do? She pulled me by the ear out of the club. So that was a big deal. He didn't complain of anything except that disrespect. So you see how much that speaks to most men. You know, it doesn't matter what he's, he's done, what she's done, but that one, that single one, a lot. But if I flip the coin, as a man, love your wives. Am I supposed to react in any other way? Certainly not, because if I love her enough, 
even that disrespect, it must be more introspection of what have I done to cause her to pull me by the ear. I mean, if she woke up a friend driving around the night looking for me, and she pulls me by the ear, come on, I, I, I came with the 18 wheeler <laughs> baggage. I have issues. So for husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Give yourself up. Give up your ego. Even give up your respect. Because otherwise you're not going to be able to give what the Lord is really giving you to give to your wife. Love is important. Respect is important. But Christ is above all that. And if God is love, who am I not to love? So I can't fight my wife because she disrespected me. Amen. Amen. A big round of applause to our panelists. You did, you did so well. And Lindy, thank you. Uh, I think you touched on an, a very important point about um, the issue on, of lust. I've mentioned it in the first service. Um, when you are involved in sex before marriage, that is generally in lust. It's not in love. Because it's what you can get out of the relationship. Because if you really love the person, you will say, I, 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 I honor and I respect God too much. I'll honor your body. That is what love would do. But like my wife said, this is not to condemn anyone. The scripture that we, that where we said is, we do not want to be outwitted by the enemy. What you are doing in lust now, that thrill that you are getting uh, for it now, you will not get it when you get married. So the statement that Lindy made is so true. And what you find, what the enemy then keep on lying to people, they have these swingers parties. Ne? You've heard about the swingers parties. You put your car keys in a hat, and then the all the men put their car keys in a hat, and then the ladies pull. That is what is happening in the city, in the station. That is what is happening. Because they need to bring the thrill back in their marriage. Or you need, to, and I don't want to go into the deed because it's too horrific, but the enemy lies to people so that they think they will have something that is beautiful and excellent. God has intended, first of all, God created sex. It's not the devil. Let's just establish that fact here right now. God created sex. But I, we don't want to go into that topic. That's my wife's topic next week. I want to deal with any single people. If you are involved in premarital sex now, please, I adjourn you. Stop it. The day that you decide to get married, it will do more damage to your marriage. Things like what we've seen in counseling couples, even once that they have stepped over, those type of things, after 20 years of marriage, the, hus the wife still look at the husband, if you couldn't be faithful to me, maybe, then the enemy comes after marriage and, sow and sows seeds of doubt. Can you see how he's playing? Can you see his evil plans and his evil games? What was good in his eyes before marriage, he makes it now evil. It's like you don't enjoy it anymore. The other things are uh, even the, the woman can't climax. Maybe before marriage it happened, but after marriage she just can't because she sits with all this guilt of what happened before marriage that she cannot enjoy something that God intended to be enjoyed, enjoyed in marriage. The enemy is indeed a thief, ne? a robber. Ne? He kills, 
he destroys. That is his very nature. And God, in the guidance that we receive through his word, wants us as a church to be protected of that and from that. Okay? That's why he sent his son. That's why we are there so that if you are struggling in those areas, whether you're a married couple or you are uh, about to be married or you're still single, if you, are, if you are having challenges in any of these areas in your life, you need to deal with it. Now, the, the, to the single ones, you have a desire to get married one day. Is that true? Let me, sh let me see your hands. Who wants to get married? Hmm? But I think there were much more that raised their hands when they said that they are single. So it's only a few. I have a colleague at work. She will always tell me, uh, Vernon, you must pray for me that the Lord give me a husband. That's now. Today. Tomorrow, I don't want a husband. <laughs> then, Vernon, you must pray for me. What is it that you want? Hmm? So please do not change. And normally when people change like that is when they got hurt in relationships. That is the baggage, the baggage that Lindy talked about. Okay? And that is what you need to deal with. In your connect group, in uh, Victory Weekend, that is where we deal with that. If you are married, please reach out to us. Uh, we will schedule sessions and we will eradicate that thing in your life. What we require of you and from you is humility. Let pride not be present. Because the moment pride is there and an unrepentant heart and unforgiveness, there is normal where people will say, but we have irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences or these things are irreparable. We, we cannot, we just have to part ways. There's no such thing as that. Because God is able to save everyone, wherever you are. God is able to save each and every marriage because he has that ability. What Christ has done on the cross makes it able for us and each and every one to do that. But when you believe the lie of the enemy more than the word of God, obviously that, that is where your view will be formed, that this is irreconcilable or it's irreparable. We have to part ways. Let us not limit God in terms of what He can do in our lives. And especially if there are children involved. As I, I mentioned it to the earlier service. It's your child's right to have both of you. So you need to fight for your marriage. You need to fight for your relationship. It is so, so, so important. God I think it breaks his heart so much when he sees that people are giving up. That we give in to, to, to the plans of the enemy and, and we give up. And we, we, we don't give God a chance to work in your life. Let me tell you the God that I serve. He is able. Is that the same God that you serve? Let us, let's align our thoughts because I'm telling you, I've seen, we've seen the couples like my wife said, we have seen how God transformed marriages. So yours is no different. Could we stand please? I want to, I just sense that there are, there are singles in this house that did not have a good sexual experience because of what happened to them when they were young. I don't want you to raise your hand to embarrass you in any way, but we are here to pray for you at the end of the service, so please come at the end of the service. But it's important that your view and that experience that you, that you have about that, that you forgive the person or the persons who did it to you. 
and so that you can be set free from that. If there are any married couples in this room that needs help, can I see your hands, please? And especially I want the husbands to take the lead. I see one hand at the back. Is there another hand? I see another hand. Because men, we are the priests of our households. We must take the lead. So oftentimes it's the women that are reaching out. It's the woman that wants to do the counseling. Um, what I fail to share with you is the power and, 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 and the, the importance that we as men have in the spirit realm. And the, important, the importance of our covering in our marriages. So men, our role is so, so, so important. When we make a stand for our family and when we make a stand for our, for our wives, when we make a stand for them, the enemy finds it very difficult to obtain a legal title over you in the courts of heaven. That is a different rabbit hole that I don't want to go down that one now. We can talk to that for, over coffee. But it will be very difficult for the enemy when a man takes his stand and realize what he means and what he is in the spirit realm. So thank you for those hands. Are there any other people who needs prayer? Is there any sick? I see, I see your hand there. There may be somebody in this room this afternoon who does not have a relationship with the Lord. Everything starts at the cross. Everything starts at the cross. The biggest love story is Christ giving up, giving up his, his, his deity, giving up all of that, come to earth, become like us, become like me so that he can experience what we experience and die and give his life for me and die for me. That is what Jesus did for us. There is nothing like serving God. We have an external auditor there that I'm building a relationship with. I told him the other day, the Lord is more real to me and you sitting in front of me. People, Jesus is real. He's real. He's real. So if you don't have that experience and that relationship with the Lord, I want you to raise your hand. Your life will be transformed. I can guarantee you that. Your life will be transformed. Is there anyone? Is there anyone sick? Where? Anyone sick? Anybody? I want you to come to the, to the front as well. So all the people that raise their hands, if you please can come to the front. And I want the ministry team, maybe the elders can also assist in praying for, for the people that came out. Sorry, just, just in front here, yeah. Calling you to the front is not to shame you in any way. But it's just, it gives us opportunity to pray with you here and then to take your details so that we can continue reaching out to you. Ministry team, I would want you to find out from 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 the people in front of you what exactly they need because I, I, I requested different um, 
needs and identify different needs. So just talk to them and pray for them. But in closing, I would like to do a closing prayer and then release you all. Uh, and then we will, and then we need the helpers to assist with the chairs. Do they know who they are? So we need some gentlemen just to help that we break everything down and take it downstairs where they, they should go. So please let everyone not leave, especially the young men. We need your assistance. But let's just pray together. Father, we want to thank you for your word. And how effective your word, Lord, in our lives are, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the, for the people that came out this, this, this afternoon, Lord. You know exactly where they are, my God. And Father, I pray that your love, Lord, will flow over them, Father, and that you will wash them, my Lord, and bathe them, Father, in your love, my God. Father, I just ex my prayer is and my desire for them is that they will experience their, your love, Father. And if they need to forgive anyone, even inclusive of themselves, my God, my prayer is, Lord, that they will do that and release uh, whoever they need to release, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, and for us as a con congregation here, Lord, my prayer is if we have done anything where we in our marriages and in relationships and in our body have not brought honor to your name, my prayer is, Lord, please forgive me, my God. Forgive me, Lord, for not honoring your word in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for not honoring your word in my marriage, my God. Forgive me, my Lord, for not honoring your word and you in my relationships, my God. But my prayer is that from today forth, you will assist me, Lord. And I know that the promise is that your Holy Spirit, Lord, is with us. He is in us my God he will guide us he will lead us Lord he will take us here and will enable us father to become what you determined us to be Lord what you want us to be father Lord help us through the power of your spirit Lord to become who you want us to be father so that we can bring glory to your name so that we can bring honor to your name father that your name will be glorified through my life and through our lives, Father, and that your name, Lord, will not be ridiculed, Lord, by the unbelievers out there, Lord, because of my actions or inactions, my God. Help us, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, and I thank you that your blessing and your peace will be with us wherever we go. We thank you, my Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.